After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porticos. In these lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in, was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. A man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, Do you wish to get well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. Immediately the man became well, and picked up his pallet and began to walk. Now it was the Sabbath on that day, so the Jews were saying to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not permissible for you to carry your pallet. But he answered them, he who made me well was the one who said to me, Pick up your pallet and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Pick up your pallet and walk? But the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away while there was a crowd in that place. Afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But he answered them, My father is working until now, and I myself am working. For this reason, therefore, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but also was calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. So did Jesus break the Sabbath here in John 5? First, note that every instance of a Jewish observance in the Gospels, it's an opportunity for Jesus to make a point or challenge something to do with the Torah of Moses. The context is of Jesus as the servant, the Messiah, the Son of God, who Jews expected to have authority given to him directly by Yahweh, the God of Israel. And as such, there was a Jewish expectation prevailing in the rabbinic literature before and during Jesus' life that the Messiah would come with a greater authority than the prophet Moses, their beloved Savior. And this figure, this servant of Yahweh, as he's known in the book of Isaiah, would actually either revise or bring in a change to the current Torah of Moses. So here in this chapter, once again, we have freedom of choice. Now Jesus as the Messiah, the servant, the unique authorized agent of Yahweh, the God of Israel, teaches that it's all about freedom of choice now when it comes to Jewish religious days like the much beloved Sabbath. So he says, my father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. Jesus is equal with God in authority, not ontologically. That is, he's not saying that he is one-to-one -one equal with God. Jesus is not saying that he is literally Yahweh, the God of Israel. He's simply saying that God, the one God of Israel, his God, has given him authority when it comes to the issue of Sabbath keeping. Again, Jesus as the servant, the Messiah, the unique son of God, is free to do just as God himself when it comes to the Sabbath. He can either keep it if he wants to or not. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on a Sabbath. But he said to them, have you not read what David did when he became hungry, he and his companions, how he entered the house of God, and they ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those with him, but for the priests alone? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and are innocent? 
But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Departing from there, he went into their synagogue, and a man was there whose hand was withered. And they questioned Jesus, asking, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So that they might accuse him. And he said to them, What man is there among you who has a sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will he not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable then is a man than a sheep? So then it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored to normal like the other. Matthew 12 is important also because it shows that the followers of Jesus are made lords of the Sabbath, just as their Lord, Messiah, says he's the Lord of the Sabbath. The first thing to note here is that work is not in dispute. In other words, Jesus is not saying that they're wrong that the Pharisees are wrong for saying that they are actually working on the Sabbath. As a result of this, they are breaking the Sabbath. This is not in dispute in this story. Jesus does not stand there and argue that actually they're not breaking the Sabbath. No, he actually agrees that they are. And then Jesus says that the apostles are like King David himself, like the temple priests. But obviously they are not the followers of Jesus, irrespective of status, of tribe, or even if they're Jews, they are now lords of the Sabbath. And even though they're not the house of God, the temple, Jesus again compares them to the priests in the temple and to the temple itself when he talks about himself as being greater than the temple. Remember, Jesus said, whoever accepts you accepts me. Jesus later gives authority, just as he had authority, to do all kinds of miracles, even raise the dead to his followers. So they are the proverbial agents in Hebrew shaliach of Jesus, just like Jesus is the unique agent of the one God. We see here that mercy overrides sacrifices, as Hosea had prophesied, and that doing good overrides the Sabbath law itself. This is quite extraordinary because, as far as we can see, there are no exceptions to breaking the Sabbath in the law of Moses. Instead, we see that a man is brought to Moses in the book of Numbers because he's said to have been gathering wood for probably fire or maybe food, so it's a good deed, of course, maybe even for his family. Nonetheless, in that story in the book of Numbers, the man is instantly killed by the orders of God given to Moses. So again, it's about freedom. Jesus says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. I can keep or not keep the Sabbath. Again, Christian freedom is the overriding factor here in the teaching of Jesus to his apostles. Christians are now lords of the Sabbath, according to Mark 2.27. The theological dictionary of the New Testament says, that man and his needs are said to be of greater value than the commandment, that is, the commandment of the Sabbath. The absolute obligation of the commandment is thus challenged 